Uh, welcome. This is the uh, Darien Sewer Commission regular meeting of Tuesday, February 2nd, 2021, and we're calling the meeting to order at 4.35 p.m. It is a remote meeting only via uh, the town's go-to uh, meeting as identified on our agenda. Uh, the first item on the uh, agenda, we're going to do the minutes and then we'll go to uh, we'll go to add on the budget. Uh, so first is the uh, is the minutes of approval from last um, last time from January 5th. All of staff's comments are included, which for which there are many. All right, commissioners, any comments, edits, or questions on the minutes? Uh, I'll make a motion to accept. I don't see anything. Okay. Move to approve the minutes by Bob, seconded by Peter. Uh, uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, uh, Bob, yay or nay? Yay. Peter, yay or nay? Yay. Susan? Not on. Uh, Reese, you on now? Yes, I am. Yay. Yay. Or, yay? Uh, and I'm a yay. Four zero minutes are approved. Caller five, by the way, is uh, is Reese, if you want to rename him, Darren. Thank you. Did I have a cooler name? <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what do you want us to call you? <laughs> hey, you know, it's optional. We'll have a, we'll have a committee vote. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Reese, is, Reese is pretty cool. Um, Mr. Chairman, yes, sir. staff asked that we jump to 7C and work our way backwards on number seven. Yes, sir. Um, Sewer superintendent has a, another engagement, another yes, commitment. Sir. So, uh, Thank uh, you very much. Gonna take, chairman's going to take the agenda out of order uh, for scheduling constraints and here item 7C under superintendent's report first. All right. Uh, Craig, thank you for entertaining. And I, I apologize for late notice. Um, I did send you a copy of the budget. Um, I did uh, in all of the items where I had some ability, um, keep them very stable or level um, where uh, increase or changes were minimal. Um, um, I think the, uh, the big one, or the big two that we should talk about are um, one, the payments to the city of Stanford sewer treatment service account um, and kind of give you a, a very quick oversight of how I came up with that figure. Um, I did uh, use this year's invoice, which you had, you folks had seen previously um, one or two meetings ago um, where we saw a significant decrease to below 14% of our flow going to the city of Stanford for payment. Um, I also did a um, thorough analysis of the, WPCA fiscal 2021 budget and uh, where I thought um, they had over budgeted as they had previous years. Um, and I did some a uh, uh, little investigative work with them. I was speaking to Bill Brink on what his anticipated costs were in those items and saw no significant changes. So I was able to um, put in a number that I felt pretty comfortable with at $2.82 million um, for a full fiscal year. Um, uh, over last year's, I think it was closer to 3.3. .3. So we're gonna see hopefully a significant reduction in that area um, based on you know just straight line numbers. Um, Mother Nature um, will of course have an opinion on how this goes, but uh, I did try to not take any wild guesses. I did try to stay steady on this but um, kept it uh, under $3 million. Um, you have, do you guys have any questions on that? Um, no, not on, not on Stanford. 
Um, I'm glad that um, it trended in our direction for once. <laughs> also, I agree. Um, um, any other the commissioners have a question? Nothing no. here. Okay. The other item that I do want to speak to, and then I'll open it up to questions from, from any item on the budget, was uh, down at the very bottom, transfer to other funds. I want to tell you what that includes so you understand which direction we're going in. Um, it includes the uh, the new bonding fees and um, eight miles of pipe cleaning at $125,000. Um, which, uh, which row is that under? That is the very, very bottom uh, under gen general overhead and miscellaneous expenses, the very last item. Yeah. The bottom, with the red highlight on the outside. Okay, yeah. there we go. Got it. Transfer to other funds. Okay, got it. Or from so other funds. Includes our bonding fees, eight miles of pipe cleaning, which is meets our requirements for the um, Save the Sound um, uh document and our CMOM um, uh, guidance uh, and guidelines. So we also have root cleaning at 20 grand. I did, as we have previously, put money in to keep our pump stations and keep our upgrades going. So, but this year, instead of 100,000, I only put 25 grand in. I do have some balance in there already. Um, so I, I was able to, to drop that down a little bit and kind of absorb some of the the pain from the uh, sewer cleaning, pipe cleaning uh, number. So we have a bond amount approved. That bond amount was? Um, oh, crap. One, one point uh, something. I thought it was 2.3 million. Oh, 2.3. And has that been executed yet or no? Is it only executed when we you know, call for funds. When we when we start to spend money, then it'll be executed. But it's in place to get started whenever we're ready. Okay, so the, we have the ability to kind of do it as we go, as we need it. Correct. And how long does that approval last for? Does it does it get re-upped every year effectively? I, I I can't answer that specifically, but I believe it's at least two or three years. I can bring this, take this out. Yeah. Um, okay. But I would have to check with Jennifer on that. That's fine. Um, and have we heard uh, conclusively about our reimbursement from the DEP for the consultants fees? Oh, good question. Um, D Darren will be able to give you a little bit more on that um, later in our in our meeting when we go to item seven uh, B. Um, I the I and I portion of it. We okay. we met with um, Arcadis today to uh, go over our next steps, to go over our funding, to go over our uh, agreements with the DEP when the funding uh, does come available. But we'll be able to hit on that topic a little bit more for you, Craig, okay. uh, later. But it's relative to the budget either this month or next month. We're, we're, we're spending money that at some point we imagine we will get a 55 cent reimbursement for. That is correct. Okay, and then how does that 55% reimbursement figure into your anticipated budget, or would that hopefully be this year's budget closing out before July 1st and not affecting next year's budget? That will the that reimbursement is going to take care of a portion of the bonding that we took out because I bonded that yep. money in there for the study. They tell me I need to use it for that and that only. So if we do get reimbursed that money all comes off the bonding end of it where we don't need to bond for that portion. Okay. So it's not really in our cash flow budget because it's No, and I, and I think that's a good thing to be honest with you. Okay. If we don't get it or we only get a portion of it, though we're anticipating interest principal and interest payments on the whole thing, that's the only time that that would come down. We reduce the principal and interest payments if we do get money back. And we're still a ways away from really understanding the scope of capital dollars that need to be spent over time to on whatever our bond might need to turn into in the future. That's correct. Um, the anticipated bond was based on a lot of conversations with Arcadis and some assumptions on what we think we need to do as far as restoration. In the next two or three years, basically. Yeah. yeah. 
but hopefully by the end of this year, we should have something to move forward with um, the follow for more, for more long term capital planning. Yes. Um, on the revenue side, I know I have um, some curiosity uh, at how um, the pandemic will affect water use. Are more people at home versus at businesses? Are less people at businesses and, and at home? And what will the water use be from November to March this year versus November to March all previous years? And yeah. how will that swing on the revenue side? But I guess we won't know that until May or June. We, I did a quick snapshot of that for last year. I think right around the time we were doing the um, analysis on our rate. And what I was able to see is in the residential areas, we saw a slight uptick to uh, somewhere around four or five percent use of water. While in the downtown area, pump stations like Stony Brook saw a reduction of normal use. So it, it, I'd say it was almost a wash, but there was a slight increase in the uh, water usage. I think we're probably going to see a little bit again this year. All right. So this is the expense side. Um, when do you usually get um, the revenue side estimates from CompuTil? Not until, I guess, June, right? I mean, right before we. Yeah, just, just before I give you the rate comparison. Yeah. I get the water usage. Okay. Um, but tracking towards a 2.9 increase on expenses at the moment, uh, that's your budget request. Yes. And you see the majority of that is in the. Um, um, sewer treatment area. Yes. And um, you, you, uh, would you call the 2.8 million there conservative or on target? I would prefer to say on target. I, I I try not to be conservative with this budget numbers, um, but it, it all balances out when I start to do the rate comparison. I get the flows in, um, and I compare the to to the invoice. So it's it's almost like I'm chasing. I feel like I'm chasing it every year mm -hmm. um, to get a close number, and then we end up with you know uh, 60 inches of rain a year. Uh, so you know mm -hmm. I can't be I can't be that conservative. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, okay. What do you need an action from us tonight? No, this is this budget has is um, submitted to the the town administrator. I wanted you guys to see it. Unless there was something significant in here, um, this budget will be will be moving forward with the board of selectmen. Commissioners, do you have any other questions for the superintendent? Um, all right. Um, now, is there uh, an order, if we're going to move off of this item, uh, do you want to finish the superintendent's report, Darren, before we move on? I I think, if I may add, I think we have two, two residents that are on board now. And Craig, I'll stay as long as I can. Um, but okay. uh, Darren is updated on the other two things. Uh, I, I probably have another half hour. So okay. I'll stay as long as I can. But I think the residents, we should take care of them now. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, all right, uh, we're going to move up. back to uh, the um, uh, order of the published agenda with the sewer user fee appeals. Uh, we have uh, two appeals. Um, uh, uh, so we'll take uh, 874 Boston Post Road, Gray Court, LLC. William Schaefer first. That's me. Hello. Um, can you describe the nature of your appeal while we're... Sure. Um, this has been ongoing since, um, I guess, your first, maybe in December, I've forgotten, mm -hmm. or maybe it was in November, we had, I attended the first meeting, and we had determined we had a bad leak in September, and you wanted to wait and hold off and take a look at the next bill that came in, which we did, and unfortunately, there was not much of an improvement. Mm -hmm. So I went back to the water company and to our plumbers, 
and we did a thorough check on faucets, sinks, everything in the four apartments and the four uh, business uh, spaces. And we discovered that in Heights Pizza, there were two leaks in their back sinks. And we uh, we got that fixed, and, but it, it took a little while. And I think Aldo finally got the parts in and got them put in in, in sort of the first or second week in December. So I was up to come to be on the January meeting, but we had only had um, about 10 days, two weeks of the bill cycle. So I spoke to uh, Peggy and we, or Penny, excuse me, and we decided it would be a waste of time to you all until we get a full reading on the bill. So I spoke to the water company and a couple of days after that January meeting, they sent a tech out and did a mid-term reading and they said it looked like it was an, uh, there was an improvement. So when I just got the last bill, um, Penny, said, or Penny said she already had it and had, would, would submit it to you all. And it seems there was, I mean, I, I don't have the water numbers difference, but the, it was two, $200 some odd less. So it seemed to me that it was a, um, maybe we finally found the problem. Well, yes, yeah, so hopefully this will save you money on uh, at least your water bill. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, it, it just was absolutely amazing that it, it went up so much. And, of course, not being there ourselves, I mean, if I if a tenant tells me we have a leak, we get it fixed. But uh, I don't know. I, there is yeah, no so way I could know about Aldo's leak. Sure, sure. And, you know, one of the things I was thinking is perhaps, um, you know, they are more active than the prior tenant, and they may just use more water, too, than the prior no, tenant. No, it was Planet Pizza before it was Heights Pizza. Yeah, understood, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, but I, I feel like Heights does more business, but I, I don't know, maybe, maybe I don't know. Yeah, I think they do, too. <laughs> but uh, basically, all our tenants have been the same tenants for years. I mean, yeah. there, there was no big changeover in the type of tenants we had. So the difficulty on this one for me, at, at the at least, is yeah, your eighteen nineteen water bills were were very consistent in in a low in a lower range, um, you know, between uh, forty and a hundred. There was one hundred two uh, hundred cubic feet uh, early in that cycle, um, July eighteen, I guess that would have been. Um, but the the nineteen twenty bills. We're a little bit all over the place. Um, yeah, I know, and I maybe I should have caught. I mean, I didn't know what to look for, and actually, in a way, I'm sort of surprised. In our residence in Rowayton, when we have something like that, I usually get a notice from the water company saying, "You better look into it. Your 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 yeah, usage has yeah. gone up." Yeah, I have, got nothing from Aguarian. Their computers tend to look for uh, anomalies as they happen. Um, so, but you know, I'm looking at at your 1920 water use, and you know, August 19 was 106, uh, December 19 was 138. Then by March, without you doing anything, March was 65. Uh, April was 62, which is kind of a, both of those are kind of historic, consistent numbers. But then, boom, back up in June, you're 117. Jumping over to your water bill, July is, and this 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 isn't even what we're charging you on at this point. It's just, yeah. you know, <laughs> I don't uh, I don't know how it all works. I just, yeah. I, also, I basically, sort of, yeah. Your bill, we look at the twelve months from July of 2019 through June of 2020. That's what this year's bill is based on, and yeah. uh, you know, on average per month. Uh, it was not 9,900 cubic feet of water. And, you know, it, that's a little bit more than the year before. The year before was about 60. So, you know, that's a, that's a substantial increase, which is why you saw the substantial increase in your bill. Mm -hmm. And then we look at, you know, use uh, just recently to just try to track, is there a leak? Are you fixing the leak? Is there not a leak? You know, it's really hard for me to see, okay, Water use is consistently high. A leak is identified. A leak is fixed. Water use comes down because we've got 
you know, the 65 and 62 for March, which were significantly down from the December and January. Yes, Bob. It's, but isn't it 65 plus 10? So it would actually be 75 and 63. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so I'm not, I guess I'm not taking the second column. Sorry. You're totally losing me on this. I, I, yeah, <laughs> sorry. We're looking at some of our information. Um, we're, we're, you know, look, what we do with all of these is we try to find the justification. And and um, we're we're usually pretty good at finding a justification. I am having a harder time um, finding a justification on this one. Effectively, your water use for January was the same as your water use for last March. Um, well, that's with the well, all the leaks being fixed. Yeah, we got the the ma there was a major leak in September which I thought was, would resolve yeah. the problem. And then with the leaks, uh, those weren't fixed until December. Uh, so the January bill should be, thank God it was, back down to more in keeping with what it was. And the, the other problem is, you know, unfortunately that water was going down the drain. It was going into the sewers. Um, it, you know, it was ending up in Stanford and we have to pay for it. And um, uh, when it gets to Stanford, so uh, you know sometimes leaks happen and and they're not necessarily you know they, they might be outside or it might be a hose or something like that. That's a different situation. So I don't know, Bob. Bob, did you see any um, a consistency in these numbers that that? Um, no, bas you? basically, I mean it sounds trite, but it, they're consistently inconsistent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah because they're they're up and down and fluctuating yeah. so it's really hard to to now make a determination off of one month because yeah. it may be because of the leak and it may just be you know the, the normal fluctuation well we do have a sprinkler system that's on in the summer there mm -hmm. i don't know if that affects anything from your point of view uh, yeah it would because uh, well, yes, yeah every drop of water you use right uh, do we, is this one submeter? Do you know, Darren? I do not know. Okay. Uh, do you happen to know if you have a meter on your irrigation system that that the sewer department reads? I, I don't believe it. I, does. I, I do. don't think so. I think yeah. we have the one meter, and um, the one one store, the hairdresser in our building has his own meter. So interestingly enough, that sort of thing would explain why, for instance, June is 117, July is 135. You have greater water usage this past summer, right? And that could be related to your irrigation system if you're doing a lot of outdoor watering, right? Because we just get the water bill. We don't know how much yeah. is for making well, pizza. Well, the, the, the irrigation flowers. system is set on, uh, I don't know, it's been set on the same schedule for the last, you know, for as long as we've had it now. And then, of course, when there's a uh, a water drought emergency, we we don't use it at all. Yeah, and I, sure. I know we've had a couple of those, but I couldn't tell you specifically when. Have you ever, and I don't know if it's feasible given the makeup of the building, have you ever considered submetering your tenants? Um, I, I don't, I don't know if that would work. This building yeah. was, it was an old hotel. It was built yeah. in, the, in the 1920s. It would be, it'd be hard so to unwind that, I'm sure. I get it. <laughs> um, I mean, uh, it, it's, it's a very, a very old building. So let me look at a couple of things here. It isn't even, not One thing you may consider in the future, if uh, uh, is submetering at least that irrigation, if it's one line going out the building for the irrigation system, what we I could offer, talk to. Yeah, I could talk to our irrigation people. Yeah. Do I talk well, to them or do I talk to the water company? The, you, 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 it's a, it's not the water company. So it would just be a plumber that would put a, a, a submeter oh. on the irrigation line. 
Um, I'm willing to do anything that you all, you know, would like yeah. us to do. Well, you know, it's it's for you to save money, right? So we offer this yeah. to our commercial accounts. If they right. are doing a lot of outdoor water use, we will okay. come out and read a meter that will subtract that outdoor water use from your sewer bill. So. Oh, that's, I understand now. Okay, I understand. That's something for you to consider. Um, that's definitely that would definitely be a, a positive for us. Yeah, exactly. That would save you money over time, so you don't have to pay a sewer bill on your irrigation water. Right. Um, oh, that's that's terrific. Uh, other commissioners have any uh, ideas on this one? I mean, the only the only one that I I could see would be something along the lines of. Um, maybe taking, uh, well, it's the, it's the summer it's, it, but that isn't even the high one. So it's not even like taking those out. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking and thinking at the same time. Um, I, got you. I was too. I just, I, I can't see it. I mean, I'm sure there's some sprinkler water in there. I mean, I, I, you know, I, I could see taking off 40 for the year just for sprinkler, just for for that. But that's as much as I could go, which isn't a whole lot, but it's something. And well, I mean, I, I do appreciate the uh, cooperation and proactive nature of the owner uh, having plumbers search twice for leaks um, <laughs> yeah uh, no but I'll go back to even the 1718 water use was 980 so that's not all that Different. When did when did Heights Pizza take over the lease? Three hundred. Uh, Heights. Three hundred less. Yeah. You want to know when Heights Pizza yeah. went in? Yeah. Oh, hold on a sec. I gotta look. Um, hold on. I can tell you. Just gotta pull out the lease here. Yeah, I think that might be helpful if if it lines up with a change in water use okay let me here it is okay we signed the lease with them 2018 now they did not go in they did not they did they didn't start selling pizza out of there until i think almost may they did a lot of working and they got new ovens in so but they signed, their lease was yeah. dated the 1st of September, 2018. So that's that's interesting because you look at 2018 and that's your lowest water use, uh, you know, hovering around 50, 100 cubic feet between October, I go, it's October and May of 2019. And then, so you said, you said May of 2018 or May of 2019? It would have been May um, of 2019, yeah. 20, well, they moved, this, they signed the lease September 1st, 2018. They did not yeah. start open for business until that spring. I'm going to say so April May, June, or May. Yeah, so then, and so, so immediately then in, in May, June, water use, because the June bill is effectively the May use, water use starts to go up. Uh, you know, it's 73, so it hovered around 50 for eight months. Then Heights Pizza moves in. And within two months, they're at 90. Uh, and you know, th then you probably had some leaks and so forth in the fall months that we really haven't billed you for. Yeah, I, I, you know, I got to tell you, I think I think a part of the increase uh, is that maybe they're using more water. Um, and you know, I think that that all of the uh, efforts you have made to stop leaks will help you in the coming year. I think that if you choose to submeter your irrigation water, that will help you in the coming year. Um, but it's very difficult for us, based on the information that we're looking at, which is substantial. We've got a lot of data uh, to mm -hmm. to say it's definitely the leak or it's definitely the irrigation. Because I, honestly, I think most of it 
is probably just them using more water, making more pizzas, doing more cleaning. I really think, I mean, Planet, uh, I, I know Heights Pizza is good pizza, I guess, but I, I didn't, I really wouldn't have thought that they were doing that much more business than Planet Pizza and usage, but maybe, I mean, yeah. I have, Seems, Planet the Pizza was there. So They move in and the water use almost doubles. You know, it, it goes from 50s for eight months up to 90s. Um, I stopped in there. The, I, I stopped in there for dinner the other night, Craig, and yeah. um, there were eight, there were Thank eight you. people waiting to pick up. Eight people um, waiting to drive and pick up orders. Yeah, my, my impression is, is definitely just as a townsperson that orders pizza from time to time. <laughs> my impression is. Yeah. They do a bang up business, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if they're using more water. Uh, okay, yeah, so. the, the, it's very possible. So, can I get a motion, uh, folks, based but on this, our discussion? This much more water? Well, again, maybe there would, you know, uh, maybe. Uh, well, again, maybe a piece of it is the leak, maybe a piece of it's the irrigation. Um, it, it's just, you know, I don't know. I, I, yeah. Let's look at like June, July, August. In that last mm -hmm. column, November to March is way up. Yes. So were they August, building July, then, or they had sell it? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. Was that for me? Yeah. What was you the question, little, Peter? I don't know if you can talk into your mic. Yeah, okay, okay, sorry. Uh, if you look in the bill year 2019, FY19 slash 20, look in the middle square. Yep. What accounts for that there? Were they selling pizzas then or were they refurbishing? Yeah. No, they were. They, they, were, in, they were. They started selling pizzas in um, spring, April, May of 2019. Yeah, so they were occupying through the winter of uh, what you see there, 19 over 20, with all those really big numbers, Peter. That could that could be the leak, but then why would it go yeah, down to they, 65 in March without any intervention? And 62 yeah, but, in April. I mean, were they renovating during that period? No, no, they were they were they were already open for six months at that point. Right. So, so the one. Uh, so the November through February, there are four months there where there are over 100, right? Yep. But even the prior and four months were, were 92, 106, 98, 98. Yeah. Hey, Craig, isn't there? that um, February to March when we first started our COVID, COVID lockdown areas? Isn't that the time it started to hit? Was that uh, would have been yeah March twenty. Yeah, it was yeah, March, that's, kind of, March that's, of twenty twenty. But then numbers go down. That's December, January, February that are or December and January that are the real high ones. I mean November and February are a hundred, which is you know close to ninety eight and one hundred six. It's all right in the same range. So what well, could have been so at, when the pandemic hit? Here's a question. Did the other users in the building go home? The uh, the hairdresser and the nail salon and the florist were closed for uh, two or three months. There you go. That's, All the, ten, the four apartments were, were there. Yep. Heights Pizza went full full court press, and the other tenants, uh, you know, as soon as they were allowed to reopen. The nail palace and everything, which I believe we back, the water use went back up, and the irrigation. I, 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 I like to help appellants. I know your bill is high. I just, it's it's very interesting, and it's a good point that the Ed made. Uh, as soon as the pandemic started, the water use went way down, which would imply that all of those other users of the building weren't using water, but Heights Pizza still was. But then, as they well, came the back, four the four apartments upstairs were too. Yeah, they were. Yeah, but as they came, as the other tenants, the the, the hair salon and the and the and the florist came back in 
in in uh, the hair salon is on their own meter, so it would only be the florist and the nail salon. Florist and the nail salon, yeah. Uh, you know, comes back up 117, 135. Maybe that's irrigation. Um, well, I, yeah. Anyway, um, I think we've talked about it enough. Uh, do any of the commissioners have any other questions, or uh, would anybody like to make a motion? Um, I just I, I make a motion that we're unable to grant the appeal due to lack of evidence. I can't find it. I just can't. Yeah. And I'm pretty good at you, you and I are pretty good at finding them, Craig. So, but we just can't see it. I don't have a second on the motion. I'll second that. Second it. Okay, so there's a motion on the floor by Bob Hill, seconded by Peter Van Winkle to uh, deny the appeal uh, because the evidence does not support uh, the appeal being granted. Uh, any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, I'll ask for a roll call vote. Bob, yay or nay? Yeah, I'll agree with the motion I made. <laughs> Good. Well, so you don't have to. Peter, yay or nay? <laughs> Yay. Uh, Reese, yay or nay? Yay. Uh, and I'm a yay as well. Uh, I apologize, but uh, the, the appeal is denied uh, for zero. Okay, so what's the next step? Do I paid uh, I paid him uh, more than half of it, I think. I, I gave you a check in the beginning and I sent in another $2,000. Will you issue me a new bill or do I, do I just subtract that and send the rest yeah. in? What do I do? We can have the assessor yes. uh, send you a bill for uh, the balance. We'll send okay. a new bill. Yep. All righty. Well, thank quarter. you for your time. Thank you. Sorry about that. Have a good night. All righty. Um, 3B, which is 26 Hale Lane, uh, GB Cagnanelli. This is uh, Anna C. Can you hear us? Hello. Are we are we unmuted? No, I hear you just yes. fine, Anna. Yes. yes, we do. Can you hear us? Yes, I can yeah. hear you. Okay. Now you are you are breaking up though. You're Hello. you're off and on. Thank you for. Okay. We, we are we are off and on, or yeah, is it, yeah. is it it's the not, It's not consistent. We are we're only getting about half of your words. Um. So shall we try to call in? Maybe that would be better. What would you suggest? That sounds good. Wherever you're talking now, yeah. I mean, the phone might be good just because it'll be a clearer, easier connection. Well, that said, uh, uh, maybe we can jump in here, Bob. Uh, this one looks pretty darn clear to me. Uh, yeah, it does to me, too. Um, would you make a motion to the minimum? Uh, I would make a motion to the minimum. I don't remember what it is off the top of my head, though. What is the minimum, Darren? It's... Um, I don't remember what the upper charge was. Two, sorry about that. Two fifty four fifty three. Okay. So Bob has made a motion to grant the appeal uh, and charge the owner. Uh, the minimum uh, sewer user fee charge of $254.53. Do I have a second on the motion? I'll second that. I'll second. Uh, Peter has seconded the motion to grant the appeal. Uh, 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 so any further discussion? Hearing none. Bob, yay. Yay. Peter, yay. Uh, Reese? Yay. Yay, Craig, yay. So the appeal is granted for zero. Uh, the new bill will go out for $254.53. Hopefully you heard some of that. 
And uh, if not, I'm sure staff will get in touch with you and let you know. Let me see if I can, am I allowed to chat on this thing? Uh, let's see if this works. Did I hear it? Can't tell. Uh, I sent the chat. Okay, thank you. Maybe, there you go. Very good, Craig. <laughs> thank you. Uh, okay. All right, I think they got it. Uh, all right, moving on with the agenda, uh, or is there something uh, else you want to talk about, Ed, while you have a couple of minutes, or you, should we just go in order? Why don't we just go in order? Um, see that I'm <clears throat> skating on some free time right now, but let's just move ahead. Okay, uh, I'm going to recuse myself from the next item. Uh, our vice chair, Mr. Hill, needs to take the gavel uh, for any uh, discussion or update on... Uh, Near water lane. I'll mute myself. Uh, so this would be the drawing that we got, correct? That is correct. That is correct. Are, are you referring to the one that you got today by email? No, I'm referring to the one that I got in the packet. Okay. Um, then I have a little bit of an explanation for you. You also have uh, an email drawing. The one you got in your package um, staff made a number of comments, revisions, suggested improvements, um, uh, technical uh, standards that would match the town um, standards. And um, we received those plans today with 99.9% .9 of the our recommendations made. So you have a, a new set of plans. Um, that you just got today, obviously, I I know you haven't had a chance to review them, um, but you do have them in your inbox, and we're working through the technical aspects. I just a brief review this afternoon looks like uh, they're almost there with the technical stuff and the plans. Um, I think the harder part is for the sewer commission to uh, decide how this is going to go, if it's going to be a developer's agreement, if it's going to be a town project, or um, if we're going to treat it like a lateral and somehow make them inspect the sewer um, to, make, to give a full-time inspection to make sure that we're satisfied it was built correctly. Um, it, it's not a big project. and we probably don't have to do a whole bunch more on the technical side. It's not going to be, uh, you know, a, a multi-million dollar project where um, we would be in a situation where there's multiple bidders and uh, big front end documents as we would on one of our bigger projects. I would at least envision that these developers would um, probably like to handle this themselves, go out and get a contractor, and I don't see a problem with that as long as uh, we had something in place to make sure that it was inspected and signed off by a professional engineer and give us reasonable assurances that the project was, was built in accordance with um, town standards okay uh, the question I have is how many possible houses are there you know that on the I, I well I can tell you what I know the the project started out for 88 near water lane right yeah and that's the house on the end on the on the river um, because they're in the process of uh, raising a house and putting a new house there and the old the house that's there now, or I don't know if it's been demolished or not, but it was on septic. There never was a sewer. Um, obviously, they don't have access. They need to get to Near Water Lane to have access, and that was always contemplated. 
Then um, the property next door by the Tweedies, um, it's a much bigger parcel. And I understand that um, the Tweedies and the Kehoes have had conversations and they are cooperating. I don't know who's paying for what, but um, they the plan that you have before you has three connections for uh, the Tweedies and one for the Kehoes, which is 88 Nearwater. So if you just look at the property itself on the Tweedy and it seems to be much, much bigger and would allow a much more um, robust development than just three laterals. But there's also, it looks like on the town map, a lot of coastal wetlands. So it doesn't seem like they're getting too aggressive. They're looking for three, to answer your question, a total of four laterals. And everybody else, everybody else has access on, on uh, Nearwater Lane. So the other properties that abut this access way, um, uh, I would imagine are already connected and even if they weren't, would not be interested in paying to extend a sewer when they already have a sewer in front of their property. Okay. Um, and is this, this is size such that it can handle for, uh, for, uh, residences? Yes. Um, one of the, well, first of all, uh, Two inch line will will handle in a low pressure sewer system, which is what's proposed. Yeah, the um, E1. Yeah, the E1s that'll that'll handle. Uh, I think an inch and a half is up to nine houses. So the two inches, uh, way more than enough to handle um, four houses. And um, one of the recommendations we made to the design engineer was. Um, there's a high point in the middle of the road. Why not uh, install a gravity sewer so you don't have this big, long pressure line all the way to Nearwater Lane? Um, you can put gravity in, and it'll, it, 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 limits, it limits the amount of um, pressure sewer that you have, which is, uh, you know, a, an 8-inch pipe is easier to clean, easier to inspect, easier to look in and know if something's wrong. So we can we can cut the pressure part of it in half, which is uh, you'll see that in your email copy. Yeah, I was going to say that's it's two inch all the way to the street here, all the way to near water. Yes, um, it'll be gravity of the last half. Okay, uh, so what's the you said ninety nine point whatever? What's the other whatever? Yeah, you still have concerns. Little on? things, not no no real concern that. Um, a little bit more detail on the connections, um, a little bit more detail on the bench walls in the doghouse manhole that's going to go out in near water lane. Um, the bench walls should be completely vertical instead of coming up over the spring line of the pipe. Um, and the, and the bench walls should be to the full height of the pipe. There's a 18 inch pipe out in near water lane. They're going to drop a manhole over the top of that and um, fill it with concrete. What you want to do is put plywood vertically um, and form it so that when you chop the top of the pipe out, you have uh, a bench wall that is the full depth of the pipe, in this case, 18 inches. And then from the side, the the 8-inch uh, pipe would come in and dump into that. Um, with its own trowel. So that, that detail's not complete. I don't think it would be clear to a contractor that was bidding it. Those are the kinds of minor issues, um, but we don't, we don't see any problems with uh, the system functioning um, as they intend. Okay. Um, question. Since Nearwater is a rather important line should we have a heightened sense of inspection on it while they're doing it i think that we should have a heightened sense on anything that connects to any of our sewers um yeah near water if they do something wrong on near water you're right uh, something something major could happen 
Um, if they put a doghouse manhole on top of that pipe and they break it, um, that's going to create an emergency repair situation. So, um, yes, uh, when when they're doing that doghouse manhole, absolutely. And um, I would go further and say when they're putting in the rest of the pipe, we need to be very careful to make sure no deleterious material gets into that sewer and ends up in our sewer, potentially causing problems to our pumps, which are right there. You know, um, you can almost hit it with a nine iron from or to the near water pump station. It's not very far at all. The, whatever goes in that pipe will very quickly end up in our pump. So yes, we should be extra careful. Uh, and has something been done in the past to do to to do that, or am I, you know, looking too 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 in depth on this? Um, we've done doghouse manholes before, and um, I. I I won't say there's no risk. There's a risk with everything, but uh, if you're careful, you dig around the pipe. Once that's done, the manhole goes over and you don't touch the pipe. You fill it with concrete and do the forming, as I mentioned before. And um, then later you take the top of the pipe off by saw cutting it. And um, I guess to your point, you'd have to be careful to make sure parts of that pipe during the removal process don't end up going down the sewer. That would probably be one of the key points um, to prevent that would, that might cause a problem. One of the potential problems. Okay. We can easily overcome that with a screen, a basket downstream, like when we clean our, our sewers, very similar. Um, we're trying to catch the stuff that we're cleaning out of the pipe. Okay, um, so do we need a motion other than to uh, accept the plans or do we need to make a motion to accept the plans as they are on the internet and allow you to make the other um, changes administratively or where are we at? I would, I would love it if you would um, trust staff to uh, work through the technical details. Uh, that motion would be great for us. We can keep things moving. Um, this guy has been in front of the commission at least two times, uh, maybe three, but um, it, it would be nice to allow us to uh, move it forward in between meeting cycles. And um, I'm all ears as far as what the commission would decide for um, whether they want a developer's agreement or not, or uh, whether we're going to treat this as a private lateral, whether we want an easement, whether we plan on taking over the sewer, those kinds of issues. Um, it, you you really can go any way you want here. Um, if it if it helps the commission, I can tell you that uh, it it's you've gone both ways. Most of the time, it's an easement. If, if there's a sewer main on private property, you usually require a developer's agreement, require an easement, and then you take over the sewer. Um, we've discussed in the past that if there's a problem with the sewer, any sewer within the boundaries of Darien, we are compelled to act. We cannot ignore it. It doesn't really matter, <clears throat> excuse me, if it's a private sewer or not, we, we still have to act and react um, to whatever it is to abate the nuisance. However, um, most recently, it didn't get started yet, but the Palmer Project on Heights Road, um, the Sewer Commission moved to keep the sewer that's going to be extended onto that property private. Um, there is a sewer main defined by the fact that there'll be manholes and a mainline pipe connecting the manholes and lateral connections in between the manholes. That's that's how we would design, define a, a sewer main. And the commission did decide that that was not significant enough um, and that it would be best for the developer to take care of that. And we all recognize that if we had to, we'd go in there anyway. Okay, does anyone else have any comments or questions? 
No, I, I'm of the given all the, the what you've just talked about, Darren. I think a private lateral would be the better way to treat this, just for efficiency, and let them build it and um, not take it over, but have the right to maintain it as we always the responsibility, so to speak. Um, and an as built by an engineer, I like that idea. Um, as inspections, whatever whatever you think is right, and I'm I'm totally in favor of letting staff figure the rest one percent out of this application. Um, me if you want a motion i'll be glad to make that okay can i repeat that for you um if you were to put that in the form of motion it would be um treat the sewer as a, a private extension and that it would be the homeowner's responsibility and there would no be no easement required and you would defer to staff on the technical aspects you would like a record drawing and that would be signed off by a PE saying that it was built correctly. Yep, um, as built. Sure. Okay, and um, you didn't mention, but I, I would kind of, we always do it, um, full-time inspection. I would agree with that, yeah, sure, absolutely. Okay, and that's Reese, number one. First. Bye-bye. Do you have any questions or comments on Reese's motion, Peter? No, I'm just trying to... No. Would you like to second it? Oh, yeah, I'll second it. Okay. Uh, we'll tell, take a vote. All those in favor, Reese? Aye. Peter's a, Peter's a yes, and I'm a yes, so it's 3-0. It's unanimous with... Uh, Craig abstaining. Thank you very much. That that's a great help. Thank yeah. you, Darren. <laughs> uh, I guess I got the gavel back now. Yes. All uh, right. We'll move on with the agenda. Item number five: uh, sewer connection fees, approval of code revision, and scheduling of public hearing. Is the latest draft in Mission here. Mission May. Uh, Commissioner may recall that um, we presented you kind of late in the day um, an approved version of the proposed sewer connection fee code of ordinance. And um, when we got it from our attorney, we immediately sent it to you, but the, the hour was late and a meeting was imminent and um, there wasn't time to review it. And the commission agreed that there was no sense in going rushing this. Um, your the dates that you set for yourself, the goals that you set for yourself was um, originally January. We would um, review it, and then February we would hold a public hearing, which is why this agenda says potential public hearing. But that didn't happen um, because we didn't get it until late, and the commission was not disturbed by that at all. It was not urgent, um, so. The copy you have, I don't have anything new for you. Um, we don't have anything new for you. Um, hopefully you've had a chance to review it. If you have any comments or questions, we can get our attorney to answer the questions. And if you're ready to schedule a public hearing, um, we can start, start that process if you like. Darren, one of the, uh, one of the questions from before that Craig brought up, was the concept that if a developer says, well, I've paid that fee, now you figure it out. Give me what I need. Um, is there anything in there that, that excludes that concept or do we need it? I think um, if I understand your question correctly, that um, Craig addressed that very clearly that it would be the difference between what was already yeah, right. paid. It's a, little, it's, a, it's a little bit of a different question, right? So we're Kenzit. Um, you know, they did their analysis of the downstream connection. They figured out that uh, the pump station and the force main were not big enough to handle the proposed development. So they paid for the enhancements to uh, and the design of uh, the changes to the pump station and the force main. Um, and that was money that the developer paid. If a developer is paying 
a large connection fee, right? Let's say Kenzit at the time, because of our connection fees, would have had to pay a $200,000 connection fee. I don't know what the numbers work out to be, just using that. Mm -hmm. um, would, would that incentivize them to turn around and say, whoa, we just gave you this 200 grand, you go fix your system. Why do we have to do it? Well, I, I think in that case, uh, I'll go back to um, your original explanation. You, you, you said it pretty clearly, and I think the lawyers captured it um, yeah, so that's the in, the, in the document. What does it say? So I'm looking so, at the document now. So I don't have it in front of me, but there it was very clear for residential. So let's say there's 100 units there, and what's what's the price for a residential unit? Um, I think you guys. Cut off, had a cut off thousand. at um, three bedrooms. Yeah, thousand bucks each. <clears throat> thousand bucks. There's a hundred, so it's a hundred thousand um, dollars. And then they did fifty grand worth of work to upgrade the, our pump station and our system downstream. Um, the, you, everything that you did was um, implied that you wouldn't go. Um, you would deduct the 50 grand that they would have to pay. No, that's um, not at all. I, or I, I'm sorry. If I, if I left you that impression, that was not the impression I meant to leave you with. The idea is if there were 20 houses on that property that were being knocked down and they built 50 yeah. houses, they're going to pay 30 connection fees, not 50 connection fees. I did not mean to say or imply that if they owe us 100 grand, but they're doing eighty thousand dollars worth of offsite improvements, then they only have a, have to pay us twenty. I don't see that in this language at all, and I don't think it's appropriate uh, to put in here. What I was looking for, and I think what Reese is looking for, is the exact opposite. Some yep. language that says your connection fee is your connection fee. Period. End of story. You still have to make sure that the downstream system can accept your development. It's, you're not. Or this you're not, is no you're not okay. Putting it this on us. <laughs> Yeah, this is no guarantee that the system would meet capacity even after the fee. You know, what so is, what, what I'm hearing is add some problem? language. Well, what, what I'm saying is, so hold on, let me just let me just read through my document here. Uh, give me a second, because there was something in here that was, you know, in addition to the roof requirements of connection fees and less. The connection fee shall so there is a sentence near the top in the first paragraph that says the connection fee shall be in addition to the permit fee and inspection fee to do under section 1000-3-2 so that's not quite it but you know the, you, whatever we have to pay for a normal sewer permit is the connection fee is above and beyond that so you're adding them together so the question is do we need a, sec a section, a clause, a sentence uh, that says uh, the, uh, the the connectee, <laughs> uh, any person or entity, and any person or entity desiring to make a connection, um, is is responsible for um, uh, any downstream or offsite upgrades needed to accommodate the effluent from the proposed use of the property in addition um, to the fee in addition to the fee and that, and that is that's a separate thought and a separate item well, the other way the fee in it and in addition yeah the fee and in addition and yeah yeah and so you, you, you the lawyers will snag it i know i know what you're saying now yeah what's that the lawyers will snag it. They'll yeah, they'll, they'll make sure it's worded it. correctly. I, I now I understand what you're talking about. I didn't yeah. I didn't get that before. Yep. Yeah. So that was I think important. And then the other we talked about a month ago was the idea that um, we don't have a consistent policy of when to require uh, downstream flow monitoring to ascertain the capacity available in our sewer system and you know there's uh, conditions where you never had a problem so you don't require it uh, there's conditions where you've had problems so you require it 
but it's very mm. hit or miss. Um, yes. And so through this process, it seemed like even if it was an administrative policy that we adopted, that we should probably adopt that administrative policy to say, hey guys, if you're doing more than 20 units of housing or you're you know, doing more than X on the commercial side, um, uh, the uh, sewer department or sewer commission has the right to request, uh, you know, or require uh, uh, downstream flow monitoring as may be necessary to um, ascertain the capacity of our system. And it may be that, like, it just so happens that Arcadis has something from within the last couple of years on a particular section, and we say, well, actually, we have flow monitoring here, so you don't have to do it. But it may be that. We don't have that data and we need that data and we need some threshold for when we require it of the person or enti entity desiring to make a connection for a certain size project. Okay, and you want to tie that to the connection fee? Uh, you know, to me, it does, it, it's just, I think it's, re it's um, related to the conversation we're having. I don't think it needs to be codified um, other than maybe just an administrative memo or policy that that we have to me it doesn't need to be in our regs and it doesn't need to be yes ed do you have an opinion yeah i was just uh taking some quick notes so you're you're looking for something that says when we walk through the door if we can quickly evaluate and stick with a policy that says we have um if you have so many units, you're going to have to do a downstream analysis. If you if you're increasing by percentage of volume, you're going to do a downstream analysis. If you're if we have a known issue, capacity, or functioning wise of a pipe, we're going to ask to have you. So, so you want something that kind of quantifies as they walk through the door that they know they're going to have to do this. Yeah. And I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. Yeah, I mean, do we? I mean, we could do it on a on a max gallon per day assessment, right? If it was, you know, and it could be a number like. If the development proposal generates more than 5,000 gallons per day or 10,000 gallons per day, that way we don't need the units or square footage. You know, we just have a number that, uh, you know, it's pretty pro forma to create from the health department um, data. Um, so I guess maybe, so on that, maybe you guys want to give some thought of where you would set that threshold and what that policy memo would say, and we can look at it next time. Um, and, uh, but for this, I think the only thing we wanted in the connection fee language is that, you know, the, the connection fee does not, um, alter the responsibility the of, the, of the connector to, to make sure that the sewer system has capacity for the proposal. And pay for maybe, it. Like you said, maybe Arcadis has some language or we can check with some of the other towns that may have something also. Yeah. <clears throat> So I think I think maybe we just hold one more meeting, uh, maybe get that a little closer before we go public. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Reese. Any other comments? No. Uh, next item on the land, uh, on the agenda, item number six, uh, payment to the uh, Darien Land Trust. Uh, is that all set or? Um, Craig, I'm going to have to step out and leave. I, I, I hate leaving in the middle like this, but I just want to let you guys know. Thank you very much for taking us out of order today so I can at least present you the budget. Um, Were we all set on six? What's that? Were we all set with the DLT, the land trust? Yeah. I, I, you signed it. <laughs> the, uh, the letter's in there. I did put a copy of the check. Um, okay. I did ask them to do a few few things like keep us updated. I did meet with Beth um, Harmon. And kind of reviewed it with her when I gave her the check. She had a big smile on her face. Good. Um, looking forward to giving us a tour of it too in the uh, springtime to let us know what they're they plan on doing. And the the other thing we did include was the uh, deadline action items that uh, our lawyer put together from the lawsuit, uh, finalizing finalizing the lawsuit and the dates that uh, apply to what we're doing. Okay. Thank you, sir. All we right. gave Thank you money very much, John. Did we give them their money yet? Yeah. What's that? Did we give uh, Save the Sound there check yet? Uh, that was, uh, Kate oh. was handling that one. Okay. So my guess is probably not just yet. Okay. But um, it's sure it's on its way. All right, good. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, so, yeah. Guys, any uh, questions? Oh, yes, Darren? I was just waving goodbye to Ed. Oh. Uh, commissioners, any questions on item number six? No. Uh, all right, back to complete the sewer superintendent's report that we started previously, uh, Darren. Okay, item A, I put some pictures in the packet. And um, you know, pictures are great, right? Um, the photo on the left on page one of one is um, one of the pipes. If you could picture that pipe being vertical, that elbow mm -hmm. with the pipe going vertical, um, and the pump sits on the opening to that elbow, and that elbow shoots the water up into the force main and eventually discharges at Beach Drive. And you can see in the center of that photo the hole, which is just uh, mind blowing to me how uh, a pump could um, overcome what, such a leak. <laughs> yeah, I, and how did that leak occur? I mean, it's a really, really old pipe, and it's been un in use for a long, long time. But um, was it scour? Um, was who knows what it was? How did how did it wear out like that? But um, nevertheless, if you look in the photo to the right, you see the gray piece in the center there, kind of in the center of that pile. Mm. That gray piece is um, the replacement part for that. And um, the two big tubes that you see are the rails that the pump will slide up and down on mm -hmm. and various other appurtenances. Um, they've all been installed. Power has been switched over. We're now getting power from the YMCA um, through a transformer, no longer from Seagate Road where the, the, the power was supply was sketchy. The generator, the new generator, which was already installed, is now um, operational with the new control panel, with the new meter, with the new power feed. The valve box, which is directly adjacent to the wet well, has had its internal components replaced, new plug valves and check valves, which were believed to be causing problems and were very old. Um, Ed has replaced both pumps. So um, it's in good shape. Um, it, it was in need of attention for a long time. We got to it. Nothing major happened. Um, from On the face of it, it could use a new hatch. The valve uh, chamber could use a new hatchway, and we probably will do that. But right, it's not in any danger of falling in right now, but it's pretty rusted probably from the salt environment of Holly Pond. Um, but you know, How we far we does should this, have uh, force main go before it ties into a gravity. It goes all the way down Seagate Road, um, then cuts through an easement and discharges over Beach Drive, and I think it's Outlook. Does Beach Drive does Beach Drive intersect Outlook? Yeah, they're per they're per parallel. Yeah, I think it does look around. Yeah, one I'm hooked around. I don't remember which one it is. Yeah, one of, I think it might be Outlook hooks around. Uh, sure it's Outlook, right where Outlook hooks around and intersects Beach. Um, that's where this pump station force main discharges and turns to gravity. And then it ends up over near water. Um, I'd have to look more closely. There's a lot of weird stuff going on in this area where. Lines crisscross. Some go to near water, and other ones crisscross back and go to Brookside. So it's one of those two. Uh, maybe it's too late to ask this uh, question, but do we, uh, you know, when the pump is shut down, how is the diversion done? Um, you mean when they were working on these these things? Yeah. 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 Um, it, okay, we we bypass pumped. In, in one instance, we actually had um, sewer trucks there, and we were pumping out the wet well. And then in another one, we actually plugged up the discharge into the wet well out in the road and had a pump set up. 
Um, I can send you photos on that. That was pretty cool. We had a, a ramp set up where, with a big 10-inch discharge hose, and we discharged to the sewer in the post road. And that was okay for a little while. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say um, this pump discharges to near water because I recall when we were looking at this bypass operation, um, if Brookside would be able to handle the flow because we were taking the flow away from near water and sending it to Brookside. So I'm going to go with near water, and that's what we did. Um, did we happen to take an opportunity to look at the condition of the force main while we had it shut down? Um, no. Uh, you mean it was it was never shut down for very long, Got it. and whenever we could, we utilized the um, force main. So, well, they worked on one pump and one side. We isolated that and continued to use the force main. But um, we are pretty positive that it's a C900 Blue Brute PVC, um, and it was broken once, and we repaired it. So um we it looked to be in good condition but not very far from the pump station got it okay so it's a it's a newer force main anyway it's a newer force main yes okay any questions on the seagate pump station and, and i'm so this was just the bad of the the worst of, sorry the bad the worst of the two pumps that you're showing us here with this uh hole in it yeah, they were uh, both. Were, everything was replaced, though. Everything. Yeah, no, so I'm, been. I I'm just showing you the one. That's correct. I hope the other one wasn't yes. worse. <laughs> no, no, that, <laughs> no, that hole. Um, the other one didn't have a hole. Now, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Just quick question: Wouldn't scouring be further to the back of the elbow if that were the case? I don't, I don't know. I'm asking an engineer is just as unofficial official <laughs> opinion. <laughs> but I but I'm not in the in the pipe swirling around and um I I don't know how that pump discharges whether it's you know most of the pressure is on that one point or whether it goes up and you're you're absolutely correct when you I think what you're implying is that um Where's the change in momentum? You know, it, you have this fluid going straight. You would expect there to be the most force when you turn the mass of the fluid. Um, I don't think that necessarily means that that's the scour point. Okay. I, I don't know. Just, we don't need to spend any more time. It was just a quick question. Yeah. I. In short. I don't know why it broke there. I it it, it amazes me. It amazes me that um, it wore out like it did. Um, sand in the pipe? I don't know. Um, you would think that liquid would never be able to wear out a piece of iron in our lifetimes. Um, but there's the hole, and now we know why the pump wasn't so efficient. Oh yeah, it didn't. Why the why the wet well didn't go down so fast when that pump was on? And I'm sure the power bill might will hopefully reflect reflect that. Yes, agreed. All right. That was yeah. a long, long, long um, project. It took a lot of time. There were a lot of issues. Um, the YMCA, the Eversource, there was a, an easement through private property that we moved. Um, there was a ton of moving parts. We, we, when we got into it, we found new things. Um, we're, we're very, very happy that this is done. As you guys know, we, um, we replaced the pumps at Nearwater, Stony Brook, Five Mile, and now Ed's working his way down to the smaller stations. And this one was a priority. Um, so we're, we're really glad to have this done. It's been it's been on our minds for a long time, and you can never tell where a problem is going to crop up. And we we could always be criticized. Why didn't you do this pump station first? 
you never know which one's going to be the problem, but Ed has approached it from top down, the biggest first. And um, we're really glad we got this done. Really happy to report that because it, it's taken a long, long time. Should be in good shape now. But what do you got on the, well, on the nicely, nice, nicely done, Darren. And, uh, you know, please let the guys know from us on the commission how hard I know they work, everybody, uh, including you. And that it's uh, it's cool to have that behind us. Will do. Thank you. Um, the II study update. Okay, um, as Ed alluded to before, we met with Arcadis remotely today and discussed all the work that they've been doing and will be doing. Um, and some of it's uh, some of it's pretty cool. So I'll just dive right in here. Um, We're going to be able to take credit for some of the work that was done on Seagate. Obviously, that was um, some good stuff that we just reported. So that'll eventually um, be. We'll we'll give ourselves credit for doing that as we should because we did it. Um, also, staff will be meeting with uh, the GIS experts in Arcadis. Um, probably later this month, um, there was a, I should back up the GIS experts were, we're trying to get our system into GIS. We're trying to get it to do a number of things. And, um, we've been talking about this for a long time. We would like to be able to utilize GIS as a maintenance tool, a record keeping tool, um, uh, a system inventory tool. We could track problems. We could track maintenance if we wanted to know what's upstream of this pipe, what, what's the sewer shed feeding this particular area, what is this pipe made out of, when was it relined, replaced, what year was it originally installed, when's the last time we cleaned it, um, did we ever do root control? Yep. All those things. When's the last time we did TVing of this pipe? Um, I think to me, that's, that's where we want to go. Incredibly important uh, for institutional knowledge, right? I mean, it was great to have Bob Reith for decades. It's been great to have you, but uh, you know, we can't have some of these, um, you know, <laughs> these these institutional details rest in the minds of. Of individuals, right? Uh, I think um, uh, to me that's an amazing uh, tool to track, and and would benefit us moving forward uh, to be able to onboard that data. I couldn't agree more. Well said. Um, and it's also ambitious. We're 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 going to try to do this. I'm I I can't sit here and say that we will be able to do all this stuff. Um, but that's that's the discussion that we're going to have, and that's the discussion that we've been having. Um, apparently, they're going to connect us with their GIS expert, and we're going to meet with Fred Dunnett over in Planning and Zoning, who is our GIS expert and knows what system we use and maybe what add-ons we would need to our program to do a bunch of the stuff that we would like to do. Um, we also talked about... You know, I, I focus on... Um... Uh, trajectory, you know, the direction that you're going, you know, to, it, it, you know, uh, it doesn't all have to be done in the next three years with all the information complete on everything, but that that you have the ability to slowly add to this over time, um, you know, mm -hmm. creates its own momentum. And it just gets more, uh, it, it's it, it gets more valuable in the information it holds over time. Yes, and and I'd just like to expand on something you just said because it's very very important to me at least, um, we're going in the right direction. Th that's the most important. But what you just touched upon, we need to make sure that whatever we do, we're going to be able to do other things that we plan on doing that we're not able to get to now. Um, in other words, let's not paint ourselves into a corner and go in some direction that we can't make further improvements. So I, I I completely agree. 
I don't care what we're doing if we're going in the right direction. I don't care that we can't do it all in a year. Nobody can, um, as long as we leave room for our, ourselves to grow. Um, we also talked about smoke testing and dye testing. Um, probably going to do some uh, smoke testing this summer. Before we do the smoke testing, we're going to have to do um, more of the um, inflow study. We're going to section off some more pipes, and we have to do that before we CCTV. Um, we have apparently they've identified 15 or 16,000 feet of, um, I don't see it on my notes here, but I'm, I'm sure of that number. 15 or 16,000 feet right now have been identified for CCTV and um, we're targeting 40,000 linear feet, which is uh, about 10% for CMOM and um, the uh, save the sound. So, um, so flow isolation late sub late February. That'll take about a week. They'll digest that and um, come up with recommendations for CCTV, and that'll happen in a month after that. And that's going to take six weeks. And from that, we'll grow um, a place where they want to do smoke testing and smoke testing may lead us to dye testing um and that's that's a long ways away the smoke testing will probably be this summer um it, it's going to be a big step when we knock on a, on somebody's door and ask to put dye in their sump pump if we ever get to that point but we'll let the process go and and see how we get there now um Earlier in Ed's presentation, you asked about the money, um, and you're right, it's 55 cents on the dollar. Um, the short answer is the governor hasn't released the money yet. Um, however, Arcadis reported to us today that um, we now have a number and an accountant. So somebody has been assigned to our project, and um, it it's the next level. Our status has increased. Um, it's now more official than it was before. So um, with this with this accountant, this is somebody that we're going to um, be dealing with and they're going to be shepherding our project. And um, there's some other forms that have been sent to Ed. He's gonna look them over. And eventually um, we're going to, Craig, you already you already signed a letter. Um, eventually, we're going to enter into an agreement with them. That's the goal. And when the governor releases the money, then we can start billing them for all of our expenses. And I think that was your question earlier on. Yeah, it is where where it fits in the budget. But yeah, just get the question answered, and and the fact that we haven't gotten there yet. There's there's a lot of other details. Um, Groundwater is six inches lower than last year. Um, they're looking forward to having a, a thaw cycle and removal of the snow cover and the groundwater elevations getting back up so they can do more of their work. Um, they're looking for big stretches of flow isolation. They're looking for us. Um, another meeting they're gonna have is with our crew again. And the purpose of that is so they can present to our crew the sewer map of the sewer sheds that they want to focus on and um, get ready for the flow isolation contractor. That means we have to go out and find the, the manholes, which believe it or not, is sometimes problematic. You can't find them all, but um, we actually had a lot of difficulty finding some of the ones in the easement areas. They, for, they just haven't been accessed in a long, long time. They're located in people's backyards, you knock on the door, so it's it's not as simple as driving up a street and with a manhole hook. Um, so we're we're going to stay ahead of them and do all the preliminary work on that for them once they give us a map. I think that's going to happen this month also. Sounds good? good. Any questions for Darren? Nope. 
Thank you. Right. Are we done with the superintendent's report? I am. Any new business? Unless, unless there's questions. I have no new business. Peter, number nine. Oh. <laughs> You're jumping right to it, huh? You know it. All right, Peter makes a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Bob seconds. All those in favor say, hey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. You can stop recording anytime you want, Mr. Mr. Ostfeld. Yeah, that's probably a good idea, huh? Before we get too loose in the. <laughs>